Hey, I just attended the Vetric user group meeting that was held online, and I know many of you wouldn't have had the opportunity to attend it and are interested in what's going on with Vectric. And as most of you know, I'm a Vectric fanboy, and so I wanted to share the uh, new announcements that their managing director, Edward, shared with those of us that were at the user group meeting. So in this video, I'm going to stay focused on a couple things. Number one is I'm going to share the new announcements about what's coming up in the uh, revisions to Vectric for the future. I'm going to also cover where the next user group meeting will be, and I'll talk a little bit about each of the features that will be happening. And last but not least is I'll share with you how if you want to become a beta tester, or at least have an opportunity to become a beta tester, how you might be able to do that. So with that, let's get into it. I'll round them up to four new features that are coming out in uh, version 13 when it comes out. The first feature will be the assembly module feature. And that's where you're gonna have the ability to assemble things right in the software in the 3D mode. The second one will be something they're calling the advanced machining module. For most of us, that won't be something that we will be too interested in. If we're not a production house or a manufacturer, probably not as interested in that. That's for higher level machines that do a lot of production cabinet shops, etc. So I'm not going to go into a whole lot about that one since most of the people that will be watching this video that I'm making are more advanced hobbyists or people that aren't doing those advanced machining projects. The third item is some updates to the EasyCarve software and subscription process. I don't do a lot with EasyCarve. I'll talk to you a little bit about EasyCarve, but some of you may be using EasyCarve and may be interested in this. It's their entry level for doing 3D modeling, but it's very, very limited. And since I have Aspire, and you know that that's what uh, many of my videos are on, I'm not going to get into the easy carve uh, environment, but some of you, it might be interesting too. So I'll talk a little bit about that. Number four is, and this is the one that's pretty exciting to me, is the Vectric AI module. They've developed their own AI module. It will be coming out in the near future. And I'll talk more about that and what that's going to consist of. The fifth item is they've developed a new product called Spark for Mac. So if you are a Mac fanboy or a fangirl, and you've been waiting for software that will run native to the Mac, they are going to have a version of that. Now, hold your horses. It may not be for you. If you are a vCard user or Aspire user and running parallels, this is not going to be the product you want to see. But if you are a brand new user or somebody that's been holding off from uh, using Vectric software because it won't run on the Mac, and if you run natively on the Mac, I should say, and if you have very limited desires for what you're trying to do with your CNC. This just might be the product for you. There you go. That's the high level summary of what you can expect, at least initially in version 13. They can obviously add more or take away from that list, but that's what they shared. If you are more interested in looking at the very detailed discussion that Edward, the managing director, shared, I will go ahead and put a link in the upper corner of this video for you to look at and also in the video description down below. So you can go right there and hear it straight from Edward and he'll go into much more detail. But if you want like a 500 foot view of what each of those things are, stick around and I'm going to go ahead and go over that next. After I get done with going over those specific things and my thoughts on each of those, then what I will do is go over where the next user group meeting is going to be held and the information that I have on it and give you links to how you could get signed up for it. And last but not least, they are looking for beta testers for these new features for all of their software. And they've put a process in place where you can apply to be a beta tester. It doesn't mean that you're gonna be picked, but at least it gives you an opportunity if you've wondered how to become a beta tester for a product you're interested in, at least link that I'm gonna give you will share with you how to do that. With that, let's go ahead and get started on each of the modules. I'll spend a little more time on the ones I'm most interested in, and I'll try to give you a fair perspective of those that I'm probably not going to pursue. Uh, the first new enhancement is the assembly module, and I think this has some real potential, and I'm really looking forward to seeing how this actually works. And in this module, uh, what Edward said was that basically they're taking it so that you can take a model that you build or one that you bring in uh, where you're trying to build something and you can assemble it uh, in the 3D mode. So you can actually see how it all fits together, check the slot depths, check the thickness, all of that. And so they will have uh, two ways of doing that. One will be their own simulation module where they can put it all together. And then the other one is 
where you can take the model you built and tear it apart or put it together. I really don't have any idea how they're going to do this. It's going to be pretty cool, though, based on the demonstration that Edward showed. And what they did was they took an example, the first example they took, if any of you have been around for a while, you remember an arcade game that I think it was Becky built along with uh, some of their friends, and they made this arcade game where they had to slot it all together and they needed to take it to different shows, so they needed to put it together and take it apart. And they needed to make sure that it would slot together just right and everything else. And that's this arcade game right over here that I'll be putting up on the screen. And he used that as an example of how the module would work. And then he explained that it would be coming out in the near future. So I'm really looking forward to that one. And I think that one will have lots of benefit for all of us. So let me show you a short, just a very short snippet of what he said. If you're really interested in seeing more in depth, go to the YouTube channel that they've got this video on and watch it there. Click on the description down in the video description. So wouldn't it be cool if instead of uh, just assembling these things in our imagination, we could assemble them inside the software? And that's exactly what Hugh has been working on. So if I just uh, uh, roll across here, we've got a sort of cheeky uh, magic view here where I can switch to what we're calling our assembly view. And here you can see if I, uh, if I just click these objects, you can see that we've got each of these parts now built in the 3D view so that we can check that they fit together as we expect and that the overall dimensions are correct. You can pick these objects and move them around as you would expect so that you can check your object. So I think this is a very, very powerful uh, and useful new feature for anybody out there who's working on a project which comprises smaller parts that need to be assembled or in some way have a relationship to one another. I can also tell you, you can use either the machined simulation as the um, assemblable part, or you can use your raw model. So you can take any model that you've made as well, uh, or component, and move that into the view as well. Well, to me, that is a, a pretty cool addition, and I'm really looking forward to seeing how that all pulls together. It's kind of mind-boggling how it's they're actually going to pull all that together, but I'm anxious to see it, and I'm hoping I get picked for the beta so I get to see it early, but even if not, I'm looking forward to that one. The next most exciting one for me, as many of you that follow me know, I've been doing a lot with Vista Sculpt and 3D modeling and so forth. And the next one, it was only a matter of time. Everybody kept saying Vectric is working on their own AI to feed directly into their programs. And they said this AI that they're developing would feed into all of their uh software programs, including Vectric VCarve Pro, Vectric VCarve, and uh, Aspire. So I'm really looking forward to that because I've been trying to do a lot of different things with the 3D modeling and using AI, and I think that's going to be a great addition. Now, it's going to be interesting to watch to see how all that comes together. It is going to be a subscription model. So they're going to have about a, a model like a lot of other places like Vista Sculpt and Sculpt OK and other where they sell bundles of credits and or tokens, however you want to look at it. And initially they said they were looking at selling packages of 200 tokens at uh, about 20 bucks and their estimate is it will cost about 50 cents a model to produce the uh, nice thing is that since vectric is doing this some of the challenges we might have with other third party processes may uh, go away but we will we will see we still need to see what type of model they create uh, meaning what um, format right now in the demo that he did it was a tiff file uh, most places are exporting as stls by using their own ai we should not be limited to only one uh, ai model at a time that we can play with at least that was my impression it's yet to be seen but since it's built into the software and it's part of vectric it would be very interesting to see let's take a look at the example that Edward showed relative to how they are going to take a T-Rex and bring it in. And that, mo that, that demo looked pretty cool. Let's take a look at that. Now, everybody's talking about AI, right? This is just the buzz phrase of the moment. And obviously, Vectric, like everybody else, has been really keeping an eye on where this technology is leading. And so now we're ready to, to kind of reveal that. We're hoping to release that this again in the next few weeks. This is a genuine, from the ground up, build focused on making CNC carvable models as quickly and seamlessly as possible. So let's give you an example. So I am going to make a, uh, what, I'm going to make a T-Rex head uh, close up from the side, and let's make him uh, roaring. Okay. You can also notice upload an image of your own, and there's a whole image enhancement and generation process, so you can either try and turn the image directly into a model, or you can have um, use some of our tools to, to enhance your photograph before you do that. In this case, I'm going through for the full text prompt. 
Um, you can see here, I've not had to put all sorts of decorating words in here, just really to the point. I've kept it extremely to the point. I don't need to describe that it's all to do with CNC or any of that stuff. Uh, we're dealing with all that by the fact that this is a dedicated CNC AI. So I can pick which of these I like. I like this one because he's a little bit bigger. Um, we only offer you a couple because basically they're all pretty good, right? So it seems that uh, this is good enough. We've got an automated system here to try and remove uh, the background again, using AI to do that. Um, and then um, I, if I'm happy with this, I'm happy to use some more credits, we can go ahead and make the model. Um, so this takes a, a few seconds to do, but it's still remarkably fast. So here we go, this is the model. As you can see, it's, hopefully you can see, it's pretty, pretty remarkable. We've built a whole system here to, as I say, it's very important to us that these models are fully usable um, for the CNC uh, job that they're intended. So you get um, various editing tools as part of this, uh, this process that you can use, um, including some quite clever things, um, which are a bit new that we've been experimenting with. One is, obviously, you can see that often you want to emphasize height in different parts of your model. Um, and so we're allowing you actually to adjust with a curve now, non-linearly, some parts of your model. So you can stretch up the mid-range, or the uh, you can deliberately suppress the top end. So there's some really powerful tools here that allow you to basically get your model into a position where you're very happy with it. Um, commonly with photographs and things like that, you might find that there's some slopes or tilts in the background. So we've added some uh, specific controls to try and take out underlying curvature or tilts and fades that are, that are very common when working particularly with digital photographs. That ability to go ahead and uh adjust the heights and curves and stuff like that. I think that's going to be pretty cool. That's something you can't normally do in the other software packages that I've used yet, uh, where you can adjust individual sections of the model. So I think that's going to be a really neat feature I'm looking forward to trying out. And that's it. Once you're happy with this, you can now download this file. Um, at the moment, uh, we're sort of working on the different file formats, but there'll be the file formats are all high, high re resolution file formats, and they'll work in, in any of our products is the plan. Okay, so once you've downloaded that file, you can come back to um, the software here, and we can go ahead and use the model. So just to show you the full process, this is using Aspire 12.5, just the latest version of Aspire. I'm going to use a template here, which is going to allow us to dish this model. This is a, a good um, technique if you've not used it, where you can actually create a dish um, up front, and you can drop your objects into this scene here. So um, if I do that, you'll see here is our, um, our downloaded file. And here you can see that we've got uh, really remarkable detail in a low relief. Um, and as I said, we didn't have to do any mucking about here with um, the um, CNC specific stuff. We're just handling all that for you. Um, so I can now position my model inside here. Let's get that nicely kind of lined up. Because again, this is a, a template file. Everything is already good to go. Uh, and I can generate and preview my example. So you can see here, this is just from start to finish. You've just seen the entire process here to carve this really remarkable uh, <laughs> model in very high detail. That's using a 1 8 ball nose again. Uh, so very, very plausible, CNC specific, AI generated models coming from Vectric um, in the next few weeks. Uh, like I said, I think this is really quite amazing. Um, so uh, we're happy to share it with you. Well, needless to say, that uh, artificial intelligence module, I'm really excited to see that. As you know, I've been doing stuff from this to Sculpt and trying to take in their models, and it's been working out pretty good. But I'm really excited to see what happens with this internal model. They both looks to me about similar prices, at least initially, on what uh, Vectric's saying. So I'm looking forward to seeing how that works out. The next announcement that I think people thought I was going to get really excited about, and I would have, if it had been a little bit more, is the concept of Spark for Mac. Now, I am excited that Vectric is moving in a direction where they're trying to take the native OS for Mac and use it in their software versus uh, Windows. But uh, where, they're, where they're at right now with this release is not going to really do much for me. It might, it might be helpful to those of you that have been holding off on using Vectric because it, they say it doesn't work on a Mac. It does work on a Mac, but you do have to run it under Parallels. I've been doing that for years, and it works pretty darn good, actually. It would work better if it was native OS for Mac, but I'll take what I can get right now. The thing that I'm uh, interested in with this Spark for Mac is at least Vectric is headed down the road of developing their software specifically for the Mac OS. The problem with me is that it's limited right now, and I do too much with Aspire and other uh, parts of the software to be limited with the conditions that the Spark software is going to be limited to. 
the Spark software is primarily going to be limited to, or at least initially, is going to be limited to cutting, profiling, uh, V-carving, and laser engraving. So, because it's going to have a part of a laser module. So for me, it's not going to be much. But if you're a Mac user and you don't really uh, use the software right now to do much, it may be an option for you. So stay looking at it and I'll keep my eye on it to decide whether it's getting to the point with its development that it goes to the full level that I can with Aspire. But unless it goes there, the Spark for Mac isn't going to be the product that uh, excites me. But I am excited that Vectric is headed down the path of uh, natively using the OS system for Mac uh, as well as Windows. There's just some things I can't switch over at this time. The advanced machining module that's coming out, I mentioned that briefly, is nothing that I'm going to be interested in, and so I'm not going to go into it a lot here. But it's going to be for more expensive production machines that have drill pass and drilling additions and things like that. And I just don't want to waste the time in this film talking about something that most of the people that are watching my videos won't be interested in. There is much more in that in the video uh, that I'm posting down below for uh, Vectric. Go look at it there. The last thing I want to discuss that Edward talked about was the EasyCarve software. That's been a product that's been around for a while, and it's their way, Vectric's way, of introducing people to 3D models and being able to carve 3D models without having to fully invest in the Aspire software. For me, since I had Aspire, it really wasn't an option that I wanted to go down. It's still not an option. The reality of it is that the Easy Carve is a good introductory way to get into carving some of their 3D models, but the limitations it's had in the past have made it really restrictive. Basically, you could only use one of their models to carve at a time, and therefore, if it wasn't a composite scene that you got out of the design and make, it would be kind of hard to use for anything comprehensive. Uh, but they are trying to improve that, and if you're just getting into carving 3D models and want a way to break in, it's a low-cost method to get in. The advantages of it are that it's web-based, so you can use uh, any kind of computer you want, including uh, maybe an iPad. So from that standpoint, it's a nice alternative if you just want to carve some simple 3D models. They are improving it uh, as they go. They are now allowing you to have one model and one background. So if you want to learn more about the EasyCarve software, again, go down and look at that video that I'm linking down there below, and Edward can talk more to you about other parts of that model. It's not something that I will be interested in because of its limitations. I'm already using Aspire, and I have uh, all of the different modeling tools available to me. I don't have the whole design and make library. I'd have to pay for that. So that would be one advantage, but it won't let you use that library in Aspire software. Now that might be something for Vectric to think about. You can only use it in the Easy Car software. It's a totally enclosed system. And with that, I'm not going to talk much more about it. The other announcement that I thought was exciting is they have come up with the location and date. For the next user group meeting, as I've said before, I'm a fanboy. I've been to all of the ones since they started in San Diego. They held that one in 2022. It was originally going to be scheduled in 2021. So I've went to the user group meeting in 2020 online, 2021 online, 2022. I went ahead and went to that one in San Diego because I live there. And then I went to the one in uh, 24 in Austin. So they have a live one every other year and a user group meeting in between those. So I'll continue to go. I'm looking forward to it. And drum roll. Okay, that is going to be in Nashville, October 2nd and 3rd, 2026. Nashville, Tennessee, October 2nd and 3rd, 2026. There's all kinds of information on the website already. They've got a hotel arranged. Go look at the website. I'm putting a link in the description of the video down below where you can go look up what you want about the next user group meeting in Nashville, Tennessee. I've already purchased my ticket. If you purchase it early, it's $249. I think if you wait until the end of the year or after a certain date, it's $299. I plan on going, and I hope maybe I can see some of you folks there. So again, the information will be put in the bottom of this description. If there's anything more I can answer for you, let me know. Please let me know in the comments whether you think it was worth me putting out this update. With that, until we meet in this medium again, go out and make some chips and have some fun.